Here is a problem where we are to find the domain of a function whose formula is given to be g of x equals log of some unknown base of the quantity x squared minus 4, where I assume the base a is bigger than 1. I'm going to be doing this problem graphically in case you have not done a lesson on quadratics yet. So I have a logarithm whose input is a quadratic equation. I know that a logarithm is defined provided that the input into the logarithm which is our quadratic expression here, is positive. To remain in the real number system, one cannot input the number 0 or a negative number into a logarithm. So we want to make sure that the input into the logarithm is positive. To do this graphically, I first find where it is actually equal to 0. So if you want to know where x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, that would be its x-intercepts. I've labeled them here. Here's a graph of y equals x squared minus 4. The output of this function is 0 when x is negative 2 and when x is positive 2. So for example, for these two x values, negative 2 and positive 2, since the output of this is 0, that would mean for those two x values the input into the logarithm would be 0 and the logarithm would be undefined. So we have to exclude the x values negative 2 and x equals 2 from our domain. But remember, we also have to exclude any x values that make the input negative. So since x squared minus 4 is the input into my logarithm, we could look at the graph, and to see where this is negative, we need only look to see where the y values are negative, because the y values are the same thing as x squared minus 4. So notice here, wherever the graph is below the x-axis, these are all the points for which the y values are negative. So you have negative y values, or this quadratic has negative outputs for any x values between x equals negative 2 and positive 2. So for any x values in this interval, say negative 2 to 2, x squared minus 4 is negative, and that's exactly where the logarithm would be undefined. So all of those numbers have to be excluded from the domain as well. So to put it another way, the numbers that we would include in the domain would be where the quadratic has positive y values, meaning the graph is above the x-axis. All of these points that I'm shading in black here have positive y values because those points are above the x-axis. And if those y values are positive, that means x squared minus 4 is positive. And if x squared minus 4 is positive, the logarithm will be defined, so that's part of our domain. So my domain would be, in interval notation, any x values less than negative 2, and that would read negative infinity up to negative 2 in interval notation, excluding negative 2. Remember, that's the x value for which the output is 0. And if the y value is 0, that means x squared minus 4 is 0. And we cannot take the logarithm of 0 and remain in the real number system. So that's the first part of my domain. I need to union that with the other part of the domain, for which x squared minus 4 is positive over here. That happens when x is bigger than 2. Just like over here, it happened for when the x values were less than negative 2. And in interval notation, the way to say that x is greater than 2 is to say that we are including x values from 2 to infinity. So it's interesting to note, here is the graph of a logarithm, and I believe the current graph is a logarithm of base 2, so this graph has a being 2. In a moment, I'll make the same argument for any base bigger than 1. But for now, you can see that the logarithms have vertical asymptotes at negative 2 and at 2. That happens when the input into the logarithm is 0. And remember, that happened when x squared minus 4 was 0, which was at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. Also note that the graph exists for all x values strictly to the left, or less than negative 2, and the graph also exists to the right of this asymptote, x equals 2, so that would be for all x values strictly greater than 2. I'm going to now go to a website called Desmos Graphing Calculator, and what I've done is I've set things up so that I can use the slider and let A take on many different values from 2 to 22. As I move this slider to the right, A will get larger. What I want you to notice is that the domain will not change. In fact, the x-intercepts will not change, the vertical asymptotes will not change, and since the vertical asymptotes don't change, 
you'll see that the domain would still remain all x values less than negative 2 and greater than 2. So let's move the slider over and as I do that, pay attention to the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptotes and you notice even though changing the base on the logarithm changes the shape of the graph, it does not change the x-intercepts nor the vertical asymptotes. And if you look closely, it does not look graphically at least, that my domain is changing. 